And today we want to continue a trend of videos that we've been doing recently where we just talk about some random games that we haven't mentioned enough. Today we've got 10 unique games, some are double A, some are indie, uh, they all just kind of fall in this in-between zone, but they're all pretty interesting. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get started off with number 10. Pacific Drive is one that you may have seen before, and it's really awesome. You get in an old jalopy car and you drive through seemingly an alien apocalyptic event. It's got survival elements, you're strapping equipment onto your car, and you're going. It's actually kind of a run-based, roguelite-style system where you gotta gather resources, build up your car, and get to the next point and zip out of there before things really go to crap. There's a lot of weird, mysterious stuff in this game when you hop out of your car and start wandering through the woods looking for a component or looking for some sort of resource. You're gonna stumble upon some weird stuff. We say that because we have gotten our hands on this one, just like early versions of the game, and with its kind of experimental ideas around how the car works, it just seems very, very interesting. A really good spin on a survival style game because we've seen so many. Uh, so this one kind of embracing science and getting through on an old station wagon car is just special. We really hope they pull it off at the final version. As of right now, we just know it's coming in 2024. Next over at number nine, we have a game called Where Winds Meet. This is being developed by Everstone Studio, a studio that we don't have too much on, but they are being supported by a bigger publisher, NetEase Games. Still, we don't expect this one to have a massive budget, but what they've done so far is pretty awesome. Uh, IGN got like exclusive gameplay, so you can go check that out if you want. It looks like a pretty impressive looking action RPG, open world sandbox type of thing. This is like a Song Dynasty era fantasy game where your characters will have supernatural abilities, but a lot of it is focused around tight combat. But with that, there's all types of traversal. We've seen running, climbing, riding horseback, and also dashing across the water, which visually is really cool. This is another Chinese developer, it's worth pointing out, uh, with the rise of other similar games of this action combat style, like Black Myth Wukong. Uh, there is definitely a rise of Chinese development studios, but it, it seems like Everstone Games is a smaller studio, but still with what they've done so far on a limited budget looks really impressive. The boss battles are pretty cool. There's a full character creator, cool supernatural abilities to use during battle, but also just a really big open world to explore with towns, fields, mountains, you name it. We're really hoping this one shapes up to be something awesome. It just got shown off a lot at Tokyo Game Show 2023, and maybe we'll get a release date soon. But for now, there's a bunch of gameplay floating online to feast your eyes on. Next over at number eight, we have Blight Survival. Now we did mention this in another video recently, but we don't see anybody really cover it at all. And it's incredibly unique. That's why we're really excited for it. I mean, look at it on screen here. You are a lone, solitary medieval knight trudging through barren villages and forests, cutting down zombies. Interestingly enough, this is going to be a roguelite style game uh, that is co-op. So you can play with some other players and essentially you're going to go into these villages, these plague ridden places that are kind of like the no man's land and you're gonna try and get stuff and do certain things to stop the spread of this horrible plague. But from what we've seen visually, the camera angle, the movement and animation of the characters and the details of the environments just make this look really damn cool. It's got a little bit of an eerie aspect to it. And uh, again, we just haven't really seen a lot of games like this, like 14th century knights killing zombies with good graphics. And this is being developed and published by Haynair Studio. We don't know too much about them. So again, we have to have some skepticism here, but it does sound like at the very least they're working on something cool and it's worth keeping an eye on. No release date yet though. Next over at number seven, we have Hellscape. I'm so excited to finally talk about this one because this is a skateboarding game. It's actually technically labeled by them on Steam, a skateboarding action roguelite. You're kind of skating through this labyrinth, vanquishing enemies, doing tricks, and upgrading your character. It seems like they're going for some endless style gameplay, like where you're just gonna wanna keep playing it. And as someone who is a fan of the Tony Hawk series, if they can nail that gameplay feel, I will play this endlessly because the maps look cool, the character customization looks pretty unique, but that Tony Hawk gameplay, for that to feel really tight and proper, it has to be downright perfect. But at least in this game, you're also getting weapons and you're swinging them at enemies. So Hellscape is unique enough to stand out and we're really, really excited to get our hands on the final product. I mean, look at this thing. As of right now, it doesn't have a release date, but take your time, make it good. We will be playing this. Next over at number six, we have a game called Beneath. This is a first person shooting action horror adventure that seems pretty awesome. I mean, visually look at this thing. You're on a boat, 
you're stuck in the middle of the ocean, and you're fighting off zombies and monsters in first-person gameplay. It seems like it's going for a Resident Evil and also Fear-style thing, which we don't really see a lot of games try and replicate the ideas of Fear, but we'll take it. And visually, the game looks pretty awesome from what we've seen so far. Again, you know, maybe this is too good to be true. We've talked about a lot of games on here that are being developed by small teams, but at the very least, these, these developers do have some games under their belt, like most recently, Those Who Remain. So we're hoping that we can nail this one because like it has you dealing with sanity, it has you managing resources and saving bullets, but also customizing weapons. And there's some creepy underwater stuff. You're doing some deep sea diving adventures as well. So they got a lot going on with Beneath and we're really excited to see how it really turns out. Next over at number five, we have Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. This is the newest game from Don't Not, who is a development studio that definitely continues to keep you guessing. They're always working on different things from Life is Strange to Remember Me. Uh, and Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden is kind of like an action RPG story-based thing set in a fantasy world in the 1600s. And through this story-driven game, you're playing as ghost hunters, but one is actually living and one is dead. This is being published by Focus Entertainment who is known for a lot of great games that aren't like big, bombastic, triple A crazy games, but they have that happy medium, you know, like Atomic Heart, Atlas Fallen, The Plague Tale games, Snow Runner, and so many more. Now, Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden seems to have a really good, spooky, haunted vibe to it, and hopefully a really good emphasis on story. I mean, Don't Not definitely knows how to tell a story. We can say that at least, so we're keeping our eyes on this one. It was supposed to release fall 2023, but it just got delayed. It got pushed to February 13th, 2024, because as I quote, as the market is experiencing an intense release cycle for AAA titles, we are convinced that a commercial release of Banishers Goes to New Eden during a less saturated period will give it the attention it deserves. And I absolutely agree. If you play any types of video games right now, you know that there are too many out right now, and Banishers Ghost of New Eden is definitely gonna need its own separate time to shine. Next over at number four, we have a game called Beautiful Light. This is a team-based shooter that was just announced, and the announcement trailer caught our eye. It's got this weird, strange, void-like thing to it where soldiers are getting sucked up seemingly into another dimension. Uh, there's spooky laboratory experiments and monsters. It's kind of got a little bit of a grown-up Tom Clancy's style Stranger Things type of vibe to it. Like just that type of horror, that type of existential threat. That's what the trailer teased and implied. I mean, you see like a soldier facing off against a bunch of venom creatures that came out of these weird portals. Uh, uh, imagery wise, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. The trailer did dazzle us a lot, but to be honest, this is a trailer. It's not gameplay. It's all just kind of visual pre-rendered stuff, but it's implying some cool, fun, mysterious aspects. So this is like a co-op tactical shooter. It may be kind of like an extraction or resource-based thing, but the announcement trailer made a splash with us, so we're gonna keep it on our list. Next over at number three, we have Greedfall 2. Yep, there's a new Greedfall in the works. A lot of people missed this announcement because all it really was was a cinematic trailer, but the European AA development studio is working on a sequel to a game that we kind of liked. It had a lot of flaws, but it also had some cool ideas. This RPG is kind of looking to spin things around. In the last one, you were kind of like a colonial settler adventuring into a new fantasy land, but now this time around, you're going to be on the native side. The trailer and stuff we've seen so far implies that you're playing as a native of tribal type person, and the settlers from the old world are coming onto your land, which could make for some pretty cool story possibilities. Hopefully they really double down on making the combat better and more RPG character building. Cause like we said, there was something to the original Greedfall. It was a pretty kind of janky mid-budget adventure RPG, almost in the vein of something like Fable. And we really think a lot of these ideas and this world and atmosphere could be expanded upon. We'd love to see it. As of right now though, Greedfall 2 doesn't have a release date, but we're hoping that they take their time on it. Now down at number two, we have Unrecord. This is another one that made a splash a while back, but was also rife with speculation. This is the first person body cam style game, like police body cam, found footage style stuff. It's a first person shooter. We've seen a character run into a building, shoot a bunch of bad guys. And it was apparently done in Unreal Engine 5. And with the visual filters and the animations and everything going on here, the, the environment work, the lighting, it looks incredibly realistic. Some people say too realistic, too good to be true. The developer has posted like their works in progress showing that it is a real game, but we still have a lot of questions. Still, as a concept, it seems really cool. The found footage, body cam style gameplay thing seems to be a 
young subgenre, but there are other games cropping up with this style, like a horror game doing it as well. And we'd like to see how this really actually pans out. Can this provide something that looks realistic, but also something that you can get immersed in? It's probably gonna be a while before we see the final version of Unrecord. It's being developed by a very small team, but it's another one that got people talking, got people interested, so we're keeping it on our list. Now down to number one, Little Devil Inside. This game looks incredibly unique and quirky with a unique special looking art style that people were immediately enamored with. Uh, and it's kind of like a survival adventure game, but it's gone dark. We haven't heard about it in a while and people keep asking. They've been asking us, I've been getting messages. I haven't heard anything. I don't know what the deal is, but we're really hoping Little Devil Inside does come back to the surface at some point and ends up being an incredible game because look at what we see here. It seems really cool and charming and most importantly, unique. Those are some games we wanted to talk about, but we got a couple of bonus ones we couldn't fit into our top 10. Uh, the first is Replaced. This is a 2.5D sci-fi retro futuristic action kind of platformer game where you're running around in a cool cyberpunk noir style shooting bad guys and doing stuff. It just really seems like it could hit. When people saw that visual style when it was first revealed at like a gameplay presentation, the collective response was, holy crap. So we're hoping we finally see this at some point. Also worth mentioning, a game called Ill. No, not licensed to Ill, just Ill. Sorry, had to make the reference, but uh, this is another game on the list that is just a gorgeous looking first person shooter, pushing all the boundaries here visually. And this is a narrative driven first person survival horror game with a little bit of a slower pace, more investigative elements, but hopefully still plenty of good spooks and scares. The environments, the atmosphere, everything here is really dripping in real quality. And you know, some of the monsters designs and stuff we've seen have been downright incredible. This is another game on the list where further videos have come out and the game has looked a little bit rougher and the team maybe a little bit smaller than the initial trailer may have suggested, but we're rooting for them because we've seen crazier things happen and we just want more survival horror -y type games. Like the games we talked about on this video, some of them are flawed, some of them are early, some of them are works in progress, but these are some unique double A and indie games that we wanted to talk about. So if you like this video and you like how we're just talking games every day, Clicking the like button helps us, but also most importantly, we want to hear in the comments some other games. Just something you think we should talk about, something we should highlight. We'd love to hear from you. Everybody's got a game, so hit us up. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.